Hello and welcome to my video. Uh, my name is Ray, Ray Erdun, and the intent of this uh, short video is going to be to introduce myself and talk about my skills in a kind of summary fashion for a potential uh, hiring manager in the world of uh, data analytics, data analyses, uh, business intelligence, and anything related to, to this area, anything that you know these, these uh, definitions or these titles can cover. So, um, first off, you know, let me start with myself again. My name is Ray Erdon, and I live in uh, Apple Valley, Minnesota. And I've been working in the uh, world of data uh, now, give and take a little more, a little longer than 20 plus years. Uh, I would say strictly um, within this world, within the, the confines of the data world. And um, in this world, I assume uh, various different uh, roles. Uh, with various different kind of, you know, similar sounding titles like data analyst, business systems analyst, business analyst, um, and, and, and any combination of those. And one common denominator is always obviously being um, grappling and uh, wrestling and wrangling with data uh, for various different uh, purposes and goals to support the businesses, to support the managers and executives uh, in their day-to-day -day efforts uh, decision processes uh, for their uh, business lines. Um, I'm not industry specific. Um, I did work in various different industries, multiple different industries. Um, examples are uh, banking, insurance, um, car rental, uh, food, food processing, um, healthcare, uh, uh, government uh, organization, uh, and those. So, uh, because of that, I can say I'm not, uh, I'm kind of agnostic as far as when it comes to specific uh, industry skills, in-depth industry skills in one area. Um, <clears throat> so typical jobs that I had so far uh, was, uh, I would say a lot of them I can remember, I can, I can uh, recite it would be uh, reporting related. Uh, again, uh, to support various different kinds of uh, aspects of business. Examples would be um, to support the per uh, portfolio performance or asset performance or financial performance of an organization or of a department uh, to kind of produce monthly reports or um, some kind of uh, sales, uh, business intelligence or marketing intelligence uh, reports or uh, that could be operational uh, reports. In addition to reports, supports, providing support for reporting purposes, also uh, work with uh, various different databases, database systems, and uh, in general data environments uh, to support uh, kind of ad hoc problems, ad hoc projects, and that could be anything uh, within, a, within a business uh, depending on the nature of the business. So uh, that's that's pretty much kind of in a nutshell, I try to describe where I'm standing at as far as data uh, data work goes. Well, obviously on this website that you're right now, you're watching this video on uh, rayerdon.com, you can also find uh, detailed information about me. If you go on the website, uh, the About Me page, and if you just uh, go down, scroll down a little bit, at the bottom, you're gonna find a section. It's called work history, and under work history, uh, it says business intelligence and data analytics, which is also the the title of my resume. When you look at my word resume, you're gonna find that title because I believe this is the the best description of my skill set and experience. So uh, there are three sections. One is summary, one is synopsis, and one is employment. Employment is is you see those buttons, there's learn more buttons. If you just click on, for instance, employment, what you see is my same, actually, word resume simply in a web format. It's kind of, you know, easier to look at uh, type of format. Uh, but information is pretty much the same with my word resume. In the middle, synopsis. Synopsis is nothing but, you know, uh, kind of a cover letter, basically. That's what I did. I put my cover letter in the synopsis section. And then the summary, if you are curious about, you know, just kind of, you know, seeing what companies I work, I worked at, you can click on that button. It, it provides a list of companies uh, that I worked so far as a contractor and as an FTE in, in a chronological order. 
So uh, those you can find those sections. Uh, because of that, obviously, I don't want to take up time on the video uh, to kind of get into detail of the resume-like details because you can always you can already find that. So what I want to kind of do again with this video, my intent is is uh, to a little bit of a ver verbally and also visually kind of introduce myself to you uh, as to the potential hiring manager, uh, whatever. Uh, kind of business line you're in, whatever sector, industry you're in, uh, I want to be able to uh, give initial introduction about my skill set. That's that's what I was trying to do. And I've been, like I said, 20 plus years, uh, give and take, uh, strictly in this area. And I had uh, this time frame, uh, 20 years, I had progressively more, uh, more involved in complex uh, uh, projects that I worked with. And I did work with... Uh, I, I obviously in the data world, uh, SQL working with SQL and and proficiency with uh, SQL, understanding the SQL statements, the SQL code blocks, how they work, when there is a need to to manipulate them, tweak them, modify them, and times you know be able to write uh, to be able to understand the data models uh, which represents the the business uh, uh, and the relationships among them. And without any any uh, a solid understanding of the data models that the the logical business is represented, uh, it would be a, a futile effort to try to write uh, effective and efficient uh, SQL statements or uh, make sense out of it the, out of the ones that are, that are on the system, uh, whether it is provided in the organization and a GitHub. Uh, be able to read the uh, metadata, data dictionaries, uh, without the solid understanding of what we're doing, uh, it will be kind of difficult, I guess. So uh, I did work with databases such as SQL Server, uh, such as Oracle. I'm currently working with Teradata. Uh, my current contract is is with uh, Wells Fargo, and uh, I've been here, I think, now on this contract. They extended my contract another year. Uh, so a year and a half, uh, a little longer than a year and a half now I've been here. Uh, and, and, and this current particular contract will be ending end of May of 2024. So uh, because of that, actually, I wanted to update my uh, this, this video. I hit another one, uh, which was a little bit older. Uh, and I just want to kind of update it and refresh it. So like I said, I work with Teradata. Um, and SAS uh, right now we're uh, we're doing some project uh, using SAS. Um, at times I had to work with Python, but I'm not myself a Python developer. In fact, you're not going to see that on my resume as a Python developer. But I can work with uh, with a. I was actually working as one of, on one of the projects with a Python developer uh, to be able to automate and work with that. So as far as from the user perspective, I can work and utilize Python. Um, <clears throat> in the past, uh, going back a little bit in time, I just want to kind of give you a little bit of a kind of a um, snapshots, you know, the sh like a short brief pictures uh, of what I was doing. Um, on one of my jobs in BASF, I want to kind of pick and pick and, you know, uh, choose from my resume and, and kind of, you know, just to kind of give you a little better idea. Um, for instance, at uh, BASF, uh, where you can find that, and if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to find that. I think the page number uh, um, on, oh, online, it's not showing the page number. Okay. If you just scroll down, uh, you're going to find that BASF in, uh, section. And uh, at that company, I was uh, tasked with. Uh, creating a tool and what they call BIT tool, business intelligence uh, technology or business intelligence tool. And the purpose of that was uh, to support uh, sales managers, district and regional sales managers to be able to track their performances and their, on the, the people, the sales people's performances under them, uh, given location, given uh, SKU code, uh, given uh, product type, product code, uh, by many different uh, dimensions and to be able to kind of track their performance and, and being able to uh, plan uh, upcoming uh, efforts uh, for sales. So uh, I was when I was building that tool, it was Excel, an access-based tool, but it was uh, interacting directly with 
uh, SAP system because in that entire company, uh, BASF actually was using overall globally uh, SAP, and I was using SAP financials as my data source and to be able to provide this kind of a tool. And uh, that was interactive dynamic tool, which was not kind of you know static report. So the managers could actually get into by using the link uh, that, that I provided, go into the website and uh, run actual uh, Excel-based uh, files that was showing the most, the, the, the current data, and they were able to use uh, and see, for instance, you know, visualizations, and visualizations, visualiz visualizations were driven by using the Excel's uh, a power pivot and BAX and Power BI actually so use in that one. So uh, they were able to use to, to see how they're doing basically uh, for the areas that they're responsible what. Another example I wanna I wanna give uh, is is from GMAC uh, GMAC RFC. I was out of there uh, in the middle of actually 2008 mortgage crisis. I was out of there 2007 end of towards the end of the 2007. Uh, again, uh, the well-known mortgage crisis, and I was uh, impacted by uh, 5,000 other people uh, within the organization. So uh, that company, I was responsible with the performance. Uh, I was a performance analyst, and my uh, my job was to be able to come up with reports to show, again, the executive uh, uh, level managers uh, how our portfolio, the company's portfolio, was doing. And that was pretty detailed reports every month uh, we were producing, and they were going up to uh, all the way to the highest level. So uh, that's that was the nature of it. Again, I was using, I was working with, or interacting and extracting data from the large databases. Uh, those were Oracle, mostly Oracle or SQL Server, and um, I was I built a system, a reporting system. Uh, that was also Excel and Access driven, but again, Access I was using as a front end data manipulation tool, and it was interacting directly uh, with the uh, the back end Oracle database. So when I was running queries, my queries actually my queries were running easily through some um, button functionalities from within Excel, which was connected to Access, which was in fact running those data sets uh, residing and stored. On, on Oracle databases at the, at the back end. And um, that's, that was an example from GMAC. And I just uh, kind of going back a few other examples of US Bank in the past and National Car Rental again, it was very data centric roles, uh, producing again, uh, working with existing reporting systems uh, uh, or sometimes adding I'd modifying them, using them, maintaining them, modifying them, and in fact, adding them or building brand new ones you know, from the ground up. United Healthcare was one example I like to give uh, the, the care solutions. It was then, it was called Optum Health Care Solutions. Right now, company Optum is called Optum instead of Optum Health, again, under the United Health Group. And uh, that job um, in the United Health Group. Um, I was responsible with uh, business intelligence type of effort. So our team, our small team, uh, we were tasked with supporting the, uh, uh, the executive management uh, with creation of, uh, creation of those kinds of reports. And uh, that was pretty demanding as far as, you know, satisfying the uh, either the VP of Finance or, or uh, CFO of then Care Solutions and uh, various other managers uh, for various different lines of businesses. So uh, again, that was uh, that could be strictly classified as a business business intelligence type of reporting, and I was solely responsible within our, our team, solely responsible with with the uh, uh, data sets manipulation of the data sets. And that includes understanding the data resources, understanding and working with the people, the data owners uh, within the organization, interacting with them, understanding uh, what they're doing, how they're doing, and accumulating those data sets, getting them, uh, staging them, and then uh, manipulating them to be able to support the monthly 
business intelligence reports uh, that was being utilized on a monthly basis uh, by the executive managers uh, and showing everything, not only financial, but it was pretty much everything. It was relating to, for instance, from nurse retention uh, to operational expenses uh, or to, to some other operational activities out, outside of the finance world and all those. Uh, so that was pretty comprehensive uh, uh, data uh, role uh, within, within the scheme that I try to describe here. So uh, a few more examples that I'm thinking here is, is, again, one of them was, I said, you know, the state uh, role. There was a federal agency, Minnesota Housing Association, that I had an opportunity to work uh, on, a, on a project. It was strictly Excel and access driven role, again, uh, backend databases being... Uh, being SQL Server, I think it was mostly then SQL Server, and uh, working with queries and coming up with query set, queries to manipulate the data sets and the automation of those. So, s such as, uh, for instance, you know, um, they were con collecting data uh, from various different sources. They were uploading to database, feeding databases uh, from the field, uh, like through their tablets, for instance, the agents, and then. Uh, I was I had an access to those databases, and uh, I was tasked with creating uh, some kind of a tracking system. It was not static reporting system, but it was kind of like a live tracking system on a daily any any time actually not daily. I think it was updating a certain time of day every day, and uh, which was reflecting the current status. So um, in that case, there was a lot of um, automation tasks required within the, within the Excel tool that was built, which was there when I started there. I Basically, I was asked to maintain it and, again, add to it and make it more, more efficient. So that was another example. Um, you're going to see on my resume several, several various different uh, Wells Fargo contracts, and uh, that's uh, my current, con again, my current job, like I said, is Wells Fargo, my current contract. I I think you know uh, if you if you look at the, how many different Wells Fargo jobs, probably you're gonna find uh, five or six of them listed on my resume. Uh, Wells Fargo kept calling me back <laughs> for the, each one of them is being different project. Or one of them is is that I really thought it was interesting was uh, the one that says uh, data resiliency team. That was business continuity project at Wells Fargo. So. I had a chance to work with various different aspects, like you know, uh, data governance and working with the uh, uh, data governance-related teams, various different teams, and coming back together to be able to uh, come up with a system that, in case of any kind of uh, uh, problems with the business con business continuity, whether it's uh, some kind of a, a, a I mean, uh, system failure, mechanical failure, or some other problems. Uh, the goal was that was again uh, requested by the financial regulations industry to be able to bring the systems back within four or less than four hours of time. A lot of them, a lot of systems were not complying with that. So basically, we had to identify those systems that are critical and also not in compliance, and focus on them and improve the uh, bring them back time, so to speak. And that was uh, uh, a lot of cross-functional, cross-team efforts, constantly get together and work and understand how we can do that, uh, the technical aspects of it, working with DBAs and developers, ETL developers, and analysts. And the goal was even within those four hours, the system should be uh, continuing to work kind of from the backup processes, but that was supposed to be transparent to the user, obviously. So that was that was another uh, data uh, extensively data related project. So uh, those are the only I just kind of wanted to like I said I don't want I don't want to take up too much of your time pick and choose those projects uh, as if you know we're in an interview a session you're asking me a few questions and I'm trying to answer them. Um, Obviously, if, if, if we were in a, in a uh, live interview session, I would be responding, try to kind of bring examples direct, to be able to uh, directly relate to what they ask us you know, during the interview session. So since we don't have that, since I'm uh, preparing this kind of, you know, uh, in this format, 
Uh, I just wanted to choose, pick and choose like uh, three, four, five examples. But again, um, what I wanted to kind of describe here is, is uh, overall these 20 plus years, uh, having progressively more complex uh, projects and experiences and uh, work uh, opportunities that I had, I believe it uh, gave me a kind of overall uh, confidence and, and uh, an expert. I, I don't want to use the term expertise. There's always, you know, more expertise. But, you know, I want to say uh, overall confidence and um, experience to be able to deal with various different kinds of uh, data related problems. Those are from uh, data analyses, data uh, profiling, um, uh, data migration, da uh, data quality, business data quality, creating a setup processes, kind of like a testing processes, like UAT type of tests, or um, more detailed tests, uh, like regression tests and those. Uh, to make sure that the migration is done correctly, uh, no data loss, no logic loss uh, during the transformation of the data or migration of the data. Uh, those kinds of processes and projects, uh, working with various different teams, uh, working, uh, I can work comfortably with the technical teams such as ETL developers, uh, such as DBAs, uh, or on the other end of the spectrum, I can also, uh, with equal ease and comfort, I can work with uh, business side, those who are, who are responsible with the uh, business aspects of the project, regardless of the, the uh, project, whatever it is. Uh, I can also work confidently with them, and especially when it comes to communicating the results. Let's say, example, it's a business intelligence type of report, and uh, I'm meeting with folks who are executives, high-level managers, executives, those, and they, they want to understand what is it that, you know, what, what are the findings? And uh, I believe I became more and more experienced uh, having those opportunities along, uh, along the way and uh, give them the results without cr you know, creating any, any unnecessary amount of, you know, uh, computer lingo and technical terms and... Uh, understanding their needs from their perspective, from the management perspective, executive perspective, uh, because everybody's needs are different given their roles and responsibilities within the organization, and uh, give them what they want. Here the key is, is to be able to give them what they want, you gotta be able to understand what they want, you gotta be able to, uh, able to relate their needs. Uh, the VIP, I'm sorry, VP, VP of finance or uh, director of finance, those folks, different uh, needs are different. Sales manager, marketing manager, their needs are kind of slightly different. Operational managers, so, um, or people who are on a day-to-day -day basis working with tools, uh, utilizing, for instance, the, the kind of systems that I'm working with to improve, their needs are different. So to be able to relate you got to talk with a lot of people within the organization. You got to talk their language. And you got to understand their needs. That is half the solution to understand their needs clearly and communicate to have to establish this clear communication lines, verbal and written. Half the solution. And once this is established, that's how I see, then the rest is okay, uh, technical knowledge, technical. Uh, kind of finesse, uh, experience in data area, and especially ability to work with data, to be able to manipulate it, to be able to uh, wrangle that data in any form or shape, you know, depending on what the project is. A lot of times there's a lot of manipulation. Uh, and most importantly, to be able to uh, put that data in a framework, which for the you know, uh, sake of simplicity, I'm gonna call it a data model, whether it's whether I create a data model or not, uh, and then and work with that. So that's in a nutshell is who I am and what I do. I hope this video uh, has been uh, kind of helpful as far as you know, understanding who that person is, uh, applying for a role that you're uh, you're trying to fill, and again. Uh, 
please, any, any more questions, uh, contact me, uh, my phone number, uh, 612-701-6292, or my email, uh, rayurden, one word, rayurden, at hotmail.com. Please uh, get in touch with me, and I'd be more than willing and happy to answer your questions in, in more detail. Thank you very much, and have a great day.